I feel very humble this afternoon and privileged to be in your presence, brothers and sisters. I hope and pray that the Spirit of the Lord will be with me so that I might be able to communicate with you. I know with all my heart and my soul that our Heavenly Father lives. He truly lives. I know our Heavenly Father is there, and he's ready to answer for our sincere prayers. He has spoken to his children in this past. He has spoken to our day, to our people in this last dispensation. He introduced, our Father introduced to his Son, Jesus Christ, to his people who live in American continent. Book of Mormon testifies, they heard the voice as it were came out of heaven, and they kissed, <clears throat> cast their eyes round about, for they understood not the voice which they heard. And it was not hushed voice, neither was it a loud voice, nevertheless, and notwithstanding, in the being small voice, it appears them that they hear to center insomuch that they were no part of their frame that it did not cause to quake. Yea, it did pierce them to the every soul, and it caused their hearts to burn. And again the third time they did hear the voice, and did open their ears to hear it, and their eyes were towards the sound thereof. And they did look steadfastly towards the heaven, from hence he sound, the sound came, and behold, the third time they did understood which the voice has came, which they heard, and it, and it said unto them, Behold, my beloved son, in whom I well please, in whom I have glorified my name, hear ye him. I know the same Father spoken to the Jewish people in the Eastern Hemistry. When our Lord Jesus Christ was baptized, the Bible testifies, and lo, the heavens were open unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, and lightning upon him, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I well pleased. I know that early one morning, in early spring 1820, in the state of New York, the father and the son appeared to the boy Joseph Smith. Joseph Smith testified, I saw a pillar of light exactly over my head, above the brightness of the sun which descended gradually till it fell upon me. When the light rested upon me, I saw two personage whose brightness and glory def defy all the description. Standing above me in the air, one of them spake unto me, calling my name and said, pointing to the other, this is my beloved son, hear him. I know Joseph Smith saw God the Father and his son Jesus Christ. And I know that Joseph was a true living prophet of God, like Joseph Smith of our day, and like the ancient disciples and apostles of the Western and Eastern hemispheres. I know that our Heavenly Father's own testimony is true. The Jesus of Nazareth is his beloved son, in whom he is well pleased. Hear ye him. I know that Jesus of Nazareth was born in the land of Judea, that he walked by the Sea of Galilee and the fields of plains of Palestine. It is his own testimony that he should, we should hear. The one he bore to Martha, the sister of his friends, Lazarus. Yesterday, Elder Monson referred this scripture. 
I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though were dead, yet shall he live. And whatsoever believe, live and believeth in me shall never die. Believeth thou this? Brothers and sisters, I believe this with all my heart and with all my soul. I know that this same Jesus conferred upon the Joseph Smith all the power and authority necessary to reestablish the kingdom of God upon this earth once again, so that every soul might have a chance to hear his beloved son. I know our Heavenly Father loves us so much that he has provided us through his beloved son a way to follow in our mortal life through the restoration of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. He has provided us the way to find eternal happiness, true happiness. Brothers and sisters, many of our father's children in Japan and Korea in the are also believing our Heavenly Father's testimony and listening to his beloved son. Shortly before I come into this conference, I receive a beautiful letter from a woman who had lost her children, uh, who had lost uh, her husband 13 years ago. And I want to read it to you. She said, I, I was left alone to raise my two sons as I was attending the baptismal service of my eldest son, who is attending senior high school, I could not help but feel the beautiful atmosphere that surrounding me. I was so impressed by the sweet spirit of the saints, how observant, I humble I felt. I observed my son, dressed in white, going down into the water, the stake president wife, who was whispering to me, told me that his sins could be washed away. I was so overwhelmed by the beauties of this moment that I felt my tears well up and my heart cried for joy. At that moment, I wanted to know about myself. What about me? What about me? It is impossible. It is possible that, that I, too, could experience a washing away of my sins. If my sins could be washed away and made clean once more, I, too, I, too, wanted to be baptized. After a few days of studying, praying with the missionaries, brothers and sisters, she came also to the Savior, and was baptized. Shortly after, her youngest son also entered into the waters of baptism. Now Sister Masako Anan and her two boys are preparing to go to the Tokyo Temple to be sealed as a family with, the, with their deceased father for the time and all eternity. Oh, how glorious is the power of the gospel which can change the hearts of people from sorrow and despair to happiness and joy. Oh, how glorious it is to know that power of conferred upon the Joseph Smith can change the hearts of people. I know that gospel has been restored. And that true church of God has been reestablished here upon this earth. I humbly extend my invitation to all friends everywhere. I say humbly today, come, come partake of this living water. Believe the testimony of the Father. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased, hear ye him. I know for those who wish to hear the Father's testimony, beloved Son, the Book of Mormon, like the Bible, 
has a similar voice. It has the word of God, has the power to change this man's soul. May I just give you an example of Korean brother who had the Savior's voice recently. Brother Che had left his wife, two children, and his mother for, two, for nine months. One day, our missionary were tracking the city of Gwangju, Korea. They found this, his family. The family began to study with the missionaries and were baptized shortly. The missionaries started the family home evening program with this family. One day, the seven-year-old daughter purchased the Book of Mormon from a missionary and sent it with her simple and yet beautiful testimony to her daddy. Two missionaries took that book to her father and bore their strong, firm testimony of the truthness of the gospel and importance of the family unity. Her father wondered why these people were so concerned and kind to him and his family. The evening came. He began to read and heard and similar voice of the Lord. And he was so, he was so inspired and found that it was true. And also he found the testimony of written by his daughter. It says, I want to share with you, brothers and sisters. She said, Aboji, 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 which interpreted daddy, daddy, daddy. I want to have a family and home evening with you, daddy. Please come back. We love you. I love you. I need you. I want, to re I want you to read this book. Heavenly Father loved you. Brother Che was so inspired and magnified by reading the Book of Mormon and touched by it and touched by her daughter's testimony. Brothers and sisters, therefore this family was united. And Brother Che is now Bishop of Kwan Ju's Third Ward. He sits in this hall today, a living example, one who, were, who heard the Savior's voice from the Book of Mormon. Oh, how we need the missionary of the Lord to carry the Father's testimony and his beloved Son to every people and kindred tongues people. There must be many Bishop Chase and there must be many sister Annans in your own neighborhood. I know Spencer W. Kimball is a prophet of the Lord. He is a living prophet. He instructs us that we should lengthen our stride, quicken our pace by sense of urgency, and do it now. President Kimball, you are a living prophet of the Lord. You are men of scorn and are covered with the scars like a Job of old. Yet you are ready to move forward to climb another mountains. We love you. We need you. Brothers and sisters, why don't we pay more humble attention to his servant of the Lord, so that we can lengthen our own stride to share the beautiful gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ with another Bishop Che and another Sister Annan. I humbly pray in the sacred name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.